surely not everyone was kung fu fighting. Oh, hi guys. <laughs> oh, uh, hey, <laughs> welcome back to the Sea Science series. Good to see you again. Missed you. What did he say about kung fu? So far, we've seen how important our oceans are for all life on Earth. It's home to marine life and ecosystems, transports heat around the world and regulates our climate. It provides us with food and oxygen to breathe. And we've learned how human activity and climate change are changing our oceans. Ocean heat is at record levels, sea levels are rising, ocean acidification and marine heat waves threaten ecosystems and bleaches coral reefs. Who are you talking to? Mind your own business. Oh! <laughs> Climate change and global warming are causing big problems for the environment and all life on Earth. The Earth's temperature is rising as more heat from the sun is being trapped by our atmosphere due to more greenhouse gases being released from burning fossil fuels. Our atmosphere is warming and so are our oceans because our oceans absorb this excess heat from the atmosphere. Mm. What? In fact, most of the extra heat caused by global warming ends up in our oceans. The ocean is like a large heat reservoir storing all of the heat energy with the strongest warming found near the sea's surface. Because our oceans absorb all this heat energy, it delays the impacts of global warming and buffers us against the extremes of climate. It takes a lot of energy to heat up our planet because of our ocean. Let's investigate. When the sun's energy reaches the Earth's surface, some of it is absorbed. But the land, atmosphere and oceans absorb this heat energy differently because of what's called their heat capacity. Heat capacity is the amount of heat energy required to increase the temperature of a substance by 1 degrees Celsius. Water has a high heat capacity, which means it needs a large amount of heat energy to raise its temperature compared to land or air, which have a lower heat capacity, so they heat up quicker. Water can absorb a lot of heat before it begins to get hot and different substances have different heat capacities. Take this pot of water, for example. On the hot plate, the water and the pot receive the same amount of heat energy from the hot plate, but the pot will heat up much quicker than the water, because metal has a low heat capacity, so it heats up quickly and also releases that heat quickly too. The water has a high heat capacity. It takes a lot of heat energy to raise its temperature. For this reason, the oceans take a long time to change their temperature significantly, whereas land and air can heat up much quicker. Think of the hot sand at the beach compared to the cool water. Because our oceans cover over 70% of Earth's surface, and because water has a much higher heat capacity than land or air, the oceans absorb larger amounts of this heat energy without their temperature changing significantly. The more greenhouse gases in our atmosphere, the more heat energy gets trapped by the atmosphere. And most of this extra trapped heat is also absorbed by our oceans too. The end result? Our oceans absorb most of this heat energy. And there's a great way to demonstrate this. Hey! Hey, where have you been? <laughs> Mind your own business. <laughs> okay, here we have a balloon filled with air, which will represent Earth's atmosphere. And here we have a balloon filled with water in it, which will represent the oceans. Mm. And under it, we have Albert Quackstein. <laughs> I really shouldn't be here. The lighter will represent the heat from the sun. From what we know about the heat capacities of air and water, what do you think will happen if we add some heat to them? It will explode! Quit stalling! Bring on the heat! Let's add some heat to the air-filled balloon first. All right, and safety first. If you're trying this, please use adult supervision and our safety glasses are on. Okay, adding some heat to the air-filled balloon. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> the tension is unbearable. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Exploded <laughs> almost instantly. <laughs> you got so <laughs> every time. <laughs> oh, I think I, let's 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 see a slow mo of that. <laughs> The balloon heats up quickly, the rubber melts and the balloon pops. <laughs> pops very quickly. But what will happen if I now add some heat energy to our water filled balloon? It will explode! <laughs> it's not bursting! <laughs> the water is absorbing the heat energy, so the rubber in the balloon doesn't melt and pop. Thankfully. <laughs> water can absorb so much heat before its temperature raises too much. 
Oh, look, you can even see it blackening, but not popping. No way. It clearly takes more energy to heat up water than it does to heat up air. Water needs a large amount of heat to rise, to raise its temperature. It has much higher heat capacity than air, meaning the oceans can absorb larger amounts of heat energy with only a slight increase in temperature. You're getting very nervous, I know you are. <laughs> Ocean temperature plays an important role in the Earth's climate system. Like we've seen in the previous episodes, it influences ocean currents, weather and climate patterns, and ecosystems that depend on certain temperature ranges. Yeah, I don't like it too hot. <laughs> as we've also seen, water expands as it gets warmer, contributing to sea level rise. <laughs> Still not popping. <laughs> Given the size and tremendous heat capacity of the global oceans, it takes a massive amount of heat energy to raise Earth's temperature even a small bit. The increase we've seen that has occurred in recent decades might seem small, but it represents a significant increase in the accumulated heat on Earth. And as we know, this extra heat is not good for our planet and all life on Earth, including Albert Quackstein. <laughs> the ocean absorbs most of the excess heat, leading to rising ocean temperatures. This affects marine species and ecosystems, causes coral bleaching and the loss of breeding grounds for mammals and fish. Mm -hmm. Rising ocean temperatures also affects the benefits humans get from the ocean, threatening our food security and changing our climate systems. That's not good, folks. Limiting the global average temperature increase of our oceans is crucial to prevent the massive irreversible impact of global warming. The Marine Institute operates many platforms at sea and around Ireland's coast, such as offshore buoys, autonomous floats and vehicles, ship-based measurements and tide gauge stations, which measure ocean temperature, <laughs> <laughs> as well as sea level, waves, oxygen, carbon, salinity, nutrients and ocean currents. Cool. These observation systems provide real-time data which is used in ocean forecast models. These models <laughs> help forecast likely ocean conditions in the coming days and to project how the oceans will change in coming decades. This noise Stop is just going, to, just going to haunt you. <laughs> Guys, thanks for dropping in. We will catch you on the flip side. Actually, Mark, I was ch chatting to Albert Quackstein and we think he got off a bit lightly today. Why? Oh, yes. <laughs> we have a surprise for you, good old pal. I did not sign up for this! You must believe in science! Go! Are you ready? No! Oh! Oh, it out. It's blackening! The balloon is not bursting thanks to water's high heat capacity! I am saved, and my hair is saved. Ha 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 ha!